This video is sponsored by Merge, because if you like doing advanced math, then you're going to love wearing it. So what are you waiting for? Go buy some. Hello and welcome back, math people of YouTube. It's your boy Kamal once again, and today we have a very interesting integral involving the floor function. We have the integral from 0 to 1 of x times floor of 1 over x dx. And the floor function, when involved in integral problems, does yield interesting results and cool solution developments, and this is one of those cases. But for those of you unfamiliar with the floor function, its job is to return back the integer part of whatever you plug into it. For example, if I were to feed into the floor function 69.420, it would yield 69, which is quite nice indeed. Anyway, so we have x times the floor of 1 over x, which may not be the nicest product to deal with. I mean, I'd like it, I'd like it to, to be the floor of x times something, but clearly that birthday wish isn't coming through. Or wait, we have substitutions. So we could let 1 over x here equal t, and this implies that x here equals 1 over t. So on differentiating, we have dx equal to negative 1 over t squared dt. And as far as the limits are concerned, as x approaches 0 from the right, we have t approaching positive infinity. And as x approaches 1, we have t approaching 1, of course. So that means i transforms into the integral from infinity to 1 of 1 over t times floor of t times negative 1 over t squared dt. And of course, I can switch up the order of the limits of integration to introduce another negative sign that cancels out with the one we already have. So we have the integral from 1 to infinity of floor of t divided by t cubed dt. What follows are some really cool algebraic manipulations courtesy of the properties of the floor function. But to make use of them, I'd like to restate this as a limit problem. We have the limit of the integral from 1 to n as n approaches infinity of floor of t divided by t cubed dt. And now I'd like to break down this integral operator. We have the integral from 1 to n, right? So why not write this as the limit as n goes to infinity of the integral from 1 to 2 plus the integral from 2 to 3 plus etc etc all the way up to the integral from n minus 1 to n of floor of t divided by t cubed dt. Now all of these floor functions are pretty easy to deal with because for x lying between two integers k and k plus 1, we see that the floor function would return k, which is pretty cool. So i here equals the limit as n goes to infinity of, let's see, for the integral from 1 to 2, we have 1. So we have 1 times the integral from 1 to 2 of 1 over t cubed dt. Then we have twice the integral from 2 to 3, terribly sorry about that, of 1 over t cubed dt again, and so on and so forth, until we have n minus 1 times the integral from n minus 1 to n of 1 over t cubed dt. So we have a lot of integrals of 1 over t cubed, which are pretty easy to solve the integral of 1 over t cubed with respect to t equals t to the negative 2 divided by negative 2. So we have negative 1 half times 1 over t squared for all of our integrals. Okay, cool. So i here equals the limit as n goes to infinity of what exactly do we have? Well, the negative 1 half is being factored out, so I might as well take care of that first. So we have negative 1 half factored out, and now for the first integral, we would have 1 over t squared with the limits being 1 and 2, so that's 1 over 2 squared minus 1 over 1 squared. Then we have 2 over 3 squared minus 2 over 2 squared. We would of course have a 3 over 4 squared minus 3 over 3 squared, and so on and so forth. And then finally we would have something like n minus 1 over n squared minus n minus 1 over, wait, I'm just going to need a little bit more writing space for that last term. And of course, we would have n minus 1 over n minus 1 squared. 
And this does not look like any summation pattern that we're familiar with. But all of that can change by just collecting together the right terms. So we have negative one half times this limit of what exactly? You see we have one over two squared and also we have negative two over two squared. So this would of course yield negative one over two squared. And wait, we have this negative one over one squared just minding its own business. And similar, by similar token, we have two over two squared and minus three over three squared. So again, we would have negative one over three squared. And we can see that this is a recurring pattern all the way up to, let's see here. Um, we have n over n squared minus one over n squared. And we're definitely going to have a negative sign here with a n minus 1 squared in the denominator. Yeah, that, that about adds up because we would have an n minus 2 term over n minus 1 squared. Correct? Yeah, everything seems to be adding up quite nicely. So it looks like I'm, I can factor out a negative 1. So I have 1 half times the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over 1 squared plus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 over 3 squared plus all the way up to okay what exactly do I have uh, I factored out a negative sign so I have 1 over n squared here then we also have wait a minute wait a minute we have 1 over n minus 1 squared and we have 1 over n squared and we have this minus 1 over n term from here which looks pretty cool because now we can write this as one half times the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum over k from 1 to n of 1 over k squared minus 1 over n. Now applying the limit here, the limit of 1 over n as n goes to infinity is of course 0 and we're left with 1 half the sum over k from 1 to infinity so we have the sum over all the positive integers k of 1 over k squared, which of course we recognize as the famous Basel problem. And we know that this thing equals pi squared over 6, or zeta 2. So this implies that the target integral, that is the integral from 0 to 1, of x times floor of 1 over x dx equals pi squared over 12 eta 2, or 1 half of zeta 2, call it whatever you want. I found this to be a really interesting connection with the Basel problem. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Do drop me a follow on Instagram and consider supporting my efforts on Patreon. Thank you. See you next time.